In the news today, a high-risk severe thunderstorm day. These are fairly rare. The last one we had was March 25th of 2021. We had none in 2022. So we're looking for a very high risk of severe weather in the Mississippi River Valley later this afternoon. A quick look at the big picture shows tropical air flowing up from the Gulf, temperatures reaching the 80s across much of Louisiana and southern Texas and 70s all the way into Iowa. We've got a cold front coming from the Central Plains into the Mississippi River Valley and a couple warm fronts. We'll go into more detail on that shortly and a push of Canadian air moving into South Dakota and Nebraska. This is what I have for frontal positions. I've got the main warm front from about Des Moines down towards Memphis. This little feature up here I think is more of a inverted trough. This entire region right here is a transition zone. It is a little bit sharper in there, but we've always got to go to the warm side of the gradient. And I found a secondary front running from about Fort Smith into the Monroe, Louisiana area. And I think that may be a factor later this afternoon in Arkansas. The main cold front extending from Omaha to just east of Wichita Falls and into the Pecos River Valley. Some cold temperatures coming back in behind that. And looking at the thickness plot, yeah, that's going to be the transition zone on that front and the air out back in the Rockies, fairly homogeneous. And just a very quick look out in the Pacific, an occlusion heading towards the northwest U.S. coast. Looks fairly quiet in Alaska. We've returned to the northerly flow, temperatures coming down once again to near zero. And we are seeing the reappearance of cold air up in the Canadian Arctic. Temperatures falling down into the minus 20s once again. The coldest temperature, minus 28 on Banks Island. And not much going on in Canada. A large ridge of high pressure from the Atlantic into Ontario and up into the polar air mass in Nunavut. And that's keeping a northerly flow from the prairies down into the Great Lakes region and helping to reinforce that cold air flowing into the back of the Great Plains weather system. On a day like this, we want to go to the 500 millibar heights and vorticity to look at the dynamics. And this is what we've got during the midday period, a strong lobe of high vorticity entering the Midwest region. So a lot of the strong forcing will be concentrated in this area. We can advance that three hours and look at the picture. So spreading right into that Quad Cities area and into Illinois, not as much forcing down to the south, but if all the ingredients are in place, that can be favorable for discrete supercells. Your next stop should be the surface chart, and it's always good to start with the warmest part of the air mass and start finding your boundaries. The cold front appears to run from about Gainesville to Fort Worth and back towards Rock Springs and just west of Del Rio. Now temperatures behind that cold front do look a little bit warm, which could lead me to believe that maybe this is a dry line and this is a cold front. However, I think the point is moot because even if that was a dry line, it would get rapidly swallowed up by the strong cold air advection and the cold front catching up with that. On a day like this, the dry line does not last very long. So which one it is, I'm not really sure, but I think for all intents and purposes, we can call that a cold front. Then heading further up north, we continue our analysis. Cold front about like that. And we look at Arkansas, definitely 80s up in Fort Smith and out around Monroe, all the way up to Texarkana, and definitely cooler around Memphis lower to mid 70s and some of this is due to cloud cover some indications of rain here and there that could have an effect on the air mass somewhat but this is a very consistent low to mid 70s so i would be inclined to put the cold front or i'm sorry the warm front about like this and right on up there towards joplin intersecting with the cold front so the triple point up there around Chanute, Kansas. And then we take it further north where we have the other high risk area and the surface low. We can certainly start with that. Looks like the main low pressure area is back in here, the lowest pressure, nine, 
29.27 there in western Iowa. The warm front appears to run from Ames, Iowa to just south of the Quad Cities and back towards Evansville, Indiana. So this all here is north of that warm front. And the cold front itself, it's going to run about, uh, about like that. Bethany, Missouri to just west of Des Moines. The next stop should be visible satellite imagery, the highest resolution you can get. And what we've got here is tropical air. This is all stratocumulus from about Austin up to Little Rock. As we go to the west, we pick up that cold front and we've got high-based convection, at least right now it's sort of high-based, from McAllister down towards Irving, Texas, and just west of Hillsboro. And this will continue developing through the afternoon, and we could see some severe weather in parts of northeast Texas. Down to the south, though, looks a little bit more capped. We're not even getting that enhanced cumulus down around Junction. Here's how it looks in north Texas. I've added the radar imagery. The cold front running about like this down through Arlington. The cells just ahead of it. And you can see that the temperature dew point spreads are running about 10 degrees, which is certainly supportive of severe weather. That means higher relative humidity and lower LCLs. I have had some concerns when I looked at the forecast QTs that as that cold front moves out, the LCLs will be a little bit higher later today. I'm not sure if that's what's going to happen, but I was seeing 20 to 25 degree dew point depressions, and that usually points to LCLs around 1.5 to 2.5 kilometers, which is not favorable for tornado genesis. But if we continue hanging on to these 10 degree dew point depressions, that will be supportive of severe weather in northeast Texas. In Arkansas, we've got well-developed convection ongoing. You can see the anvils from just north of Texarkana back to just north of Clinton. This will be entering the Little Rock area in the next couple of hours, probably by the time this video is posted, and looks like more convection in the Ozarks. So obviously we've got concerns that this will continue to strengthen as it moves towards the Mississippi River later today. Convection also rapidly developing around Kansas City up towards Des Moines, and this is along that cold front, and additional cells and additional cells in the vicinity of that warm front in northeastern Missouri. Severe weather already coming together in Arkansas as we record this. The primary cell that we're looking at right now is southwest of Hot Springs. Already have a tornado warning on that for radar indicated rotation. That does have a lot of potential to affect Little Rock. We'll have to see how the track works out. I'm inclined to think it may move just south of there. But also we got a couple of other cells, one to the north and another. Those could also strengthen as they move out to the east. And also this one down uh, that's going to be probably west or southwest of Arkadelphia later on. That could also come together. And we'll continue to watch these other cells further to the south. Those obviously have a long ways to go, but that's how things work out. It's only 1 p.m. as we record this, so there's still at least a few hours for continued development. Also, some concerns for Northeast Texas. They're really under only a slight risk for today, but a couple of key cells coming together. One around Bonham, the other in Dallas, and the other around Hillsboro. And those will continue working to the Northeast, and we could see severe weather in this region right here in a few hours. One thing that's interesting though, looking at the VIL values, some of the highest ones are down here around Hillsboro. So certainly potential on that cell as it tracks to the northeast. And you always want to compare that to the satellite imagery. Clearly we've got very, very early stages of cumulonimbus development, barely putting out any anvils, so there's still quite a ways to go, but already getting a little bit of shadowing right there north of Hillsboro, so we'll keep an eye on that. As far as Arkansas, not really much to see. Most of the indications that are of interest are going to be on radar. So our main cell of interest right there around Hot Springs at this time when we record this, the storm mode of velocity looking like this, 
I had to put in 50 knots of storm motion, so these are moving at, at a pretty good clip. We've got 34 out and 40 in. That's about 70 knots of shear. We are fairly far from the radar, looking at about uh, 62 miles, so that's pretty far distance, and that's up at 6,000 feet, but still, that is some fairly strong rotation. Also looking at the reflectivity indicators, there's that inflow area right there. I'm going to put a dot in the center of that. And we go up to the higher tilts just to kind of see what's going on. We do get some shearing of the storm, some tilt in there. However, higher reflectivities back to the west. And I can see some overhang right there, right over that inflow area. So let's check that out. Let's do a quick cross section going from northwest to southeast and we can see that overhang but I don't think we have any indication of a beware in that storm at this time. Yeah, not much to see there. Again, 60 miles is pretty far out there as far as range but we certainly should be able to pick up a beware at that range. Anyway, they're continuing to put out the warnings and we're going to keep an eye on hot springs over the next 30 minutes or so and of course little rock that could be a problem later on but again i think this could pass a little bit to the south and affect mostly benton and bryant or even further south if it becomes more of a right mover well we're already 11 minutes in and we can't make this a long show because it's going to increase the time it takes to get this posted and make the information out of date. So I'm going to try to start wrapping this up. Warm front about like that. This is going to be the medium term forecast. We're going to see that cold front coming south through the central plains. Occlusion up there in Iowa and a large area of warm air advection that will continue to support severe weather going into the night hours. So by midnight, there's how things look. Things moving very quickly cold air advection coming into the Midwest region and that low pressure area getting wrapped up there in the Great Lakes. Going into tomorrow, things moving already into the northeastern U.S. and strong cold air advection through the Rockies and high pressure ridge from the northern Mississippi River Valley onto the Gulf Coast region and we're already getting that return flow setting up once again there in Texas and that will bring up more moisture again for whatever next shot of severe weather we have. And that could be coming around Monday or Tuesday as we get this Pacific system coming out of Colorado and New Mexico. Anyway, it looks like another repeat of severe weather around midweek. More cold air coming into the central U.S. and we recharge things once again for the following weekend around August 8th or 9th, but here it looks like we've got a lot of cold air backed up against the mountains of Mexico, so it will take a little bit of time to reestablish a good severe weather pattern, and uh, let's see, that's probably out of range. I think we're looking for kind of a dormant period, maybe around the 8th, 9th, and 10th. Anyway, we'll see how things work out. And here's a little bonus from the 15Z high resolution rapid refresh showing you the forecast evolution. You can see that that's not precisely what happened. That's going to be close to the current time. The distribution of convection was a little bit different, but the general idea does focus on that area near and south of Little Rock. And that's how it has the fields by later this afternoon. Some indication of numerous supercells, discrete, and they've got that comma appearance. So it could be kind of a busy period here for the next several hours. So we're focusing on, yeah, this area right in here. Here's a similar chart for the Midwest region. That's going to be where we're at right now. And indeed, we do have a region of convection in northeastern Missouri. We talked about that earlier. And you can see the forecast development Certainly going to be some supercells in there, anywhere in Illinois, and back into Iowa. So, yeah, it's too bad we can't go into too much detail because we're running down the clock here as far as trying to get this video posted. But hopefully this gives you some interesting stuff to look at, and you can compare that with your own notes about what's happening. So it looks like at least into the 8 or 9 p.m. hour, 
severe weather possible across much of Illinois, Quad Cities, and into the bordering areas of Indiana. And Chicago, yeah, they're going to have to watch out as well. Multiple tornado warnings in Arkansas now. So things are unfolding. Anyway, we are fast-tracking the live show for April. So hopefully we'll get that going here in the next couple weeks. And I expect it will be a mix of recorded shows and a few live streams on days like this. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. A quick note from our viewer, Adam Rolfs. He says he's on his way to Mount Pleasant, Iowa to chase. So wish him luck. All right, we'll see you back here on Monday for the supporters and Wednesday for everybody else. Hope you have a great weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.